Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Skyrim's a game with more than just a handful of activities that'll keep you occupied. Anything from chasing dragonflies to murdering emperors to death is on the table in the frozen Tamrielic province of Skyrim. Though six years after the game originally came out, you'd imagine we'd probably be getting at least a little bit bored by now. However, the truth seems to be quite the contrary, and in fact, many players have yet to discover all there is to do in The Elder Scrolls V. So today, with that in mind, we'll be taking a look at five more things you probably didn't know you could do in Skyrim. Part 5. Starting off, when looking at a weapon's stats, damage is always the first place to start. In Skyrim's, and most other games' as combat systems, the higher the damage, the better the sword, or axe, or bow, or whatever it is you're using. However, did you know it's actually possible to obtain a weapon that has zero damage at all? Now this seems to sort of contradict the point of such an item, seeing as weapons literally exist to harm people. But if you head over to Angie's camp, far off in the snowy mountains of Skyrim's southwestern border in the Falkreath Hold, you'll get a taste of some arrows that don't play by this rule. Here you'll be able to speak to Angie, who will fill you in on her rather interesting backstory, before offering you the ability to use a small makeshift range she built nearby to practice your archery skill. Because she's just feeling extra generous, she'll even give you some unique arrows to do this with, called Practice Arrows, which have the same model type as Iron Arrows, but notably have absolutely no stats. Like, at all. No carry weight, no base gold value, and most notably, absolutely zero damage points. Making it the lowest damage weapon in the entire game. Now, it is worth noting that the Hearthfire DLC introduced a new practice weapon of its own, called the Practice Sword. But even that at least had a damage value. It did two damage a swing, but at least it did some damage. But back to the practice arrows. While these objects themselves technically don't do any damage on their own, bows also have their own damage ratings. Meaning, even though the arrow has a damage of zero, opponents hit by it can still be hurt considerably, or even killed, assuming you're wielding a decent enough bow. But this lack of a damage stat actually does give the arrow some utility. As if the player is attempting to deliver a poison to an enemy that depends on them not being wounded, good examples of this would be the mayhem or fury poisons, which cause NPCs to go on rampages and attack any characters around them. So for instance, if you hit a bandit with mayhem, he'll attack all of his bandit friends nearby, and weaken everyone up just a little bit for you. Pairing the practice arrow to a weak bow is the safest way to ensure your foe is poisoned and left unharmed so they can do the most damage possible. At least... Relatively speaking. Next on our list, while we're talking about weak weapons, forks and knives are a staple of any dinner set in Skyrim. The people of this land, while very hearty, often dine with some pretty fine silverware. Glass cups to hold their drinks, silver plates to carry their food, and as mentioned, forks and knives to cut and stab their meals with. Well, said eating utensils are usually classified in the miscellaneous category, like most other things you would see on the dining table, with the extent of their use being that of their resale value mostly. However, a couple of forks and knives in the game are labeled differently, and can actually be equipped and wielded by the Dragonborn as weapons. While the weapon variant of these eating utensils is already extremely rare, especially without any DLC, one surefire way to obtain them is to furnish the balcony of the Honeyside home in Riften as on a table there will be the weaponified versions of both the fork and knife. While novel items to have, they're not much more useful than their more common miscellaneous counterparts, as the fork only does one damage, making it the second least powerful weapon in the game. Or if you want to get technical, considering those practice arrows have to be paired with the bow, this fork may in fact be the weakest in general. The knife, on the other hand, does twice the damage, which is exactly two damage, tying it with the practice sword we mentioned earlier. So my advice to you is, while a humorous picture, try to avoid bringing a fork and knife to a magic fight. Coming in at number three, you guys have been leaving a lot of comments about this one across videos in this series, and I kind of felt as though I touched upon the spirit of it regarding a similar feature with insects, but evidently not. Anyway, if you're able to jump on the backs of one of the few hawks that can be found dominating Skyrim skies, you'll be able to ride it fairly easily. All that's really necessary is that you find a hawk's nest, wait for it to land there, and then jump on top of it when it does. Once it takes off again, you and your feathered friend will be able to rule the skies together. 
Alas, unfortunately, hawks don't behave like most reasonable people would assume, and constantly fly into things. This has the adverse consequence of causing you to fall off. Typically to your death, considering how high these hawks tend to fly. The reason you're able to ride birds so easily, and not other NPCs like, say, an elk or dragon, is that hawks aren't actually NPCs. Instead, the game treats them more like objects with scripted movements and motions. This is why they can't be killed with console commands. The game doesn't even recognize them as actors to begin with. Instead, they're viewed more as part of the environment. Regardless, just remember, there are no bugs in Skyrim, only features. For a fourth spot, most dwarven contraptions are pretty boring. They just stand around all day and do nothing at all. They barely even let off steam. See what I did that? Never mind. At least bandits have the common courtesy to occasionally have funny conversations to eavesdrop on. Well, if you're able to sneak up on dwarven spiders without being detected, which does prove to be a rather difficult task as they seem to bear slightly higher than average sneak detection skills and are usually supported by fellow machines, you might be able to catch them behaving rather adorably. Either jumping around and playing, or fixing up and conducting repairs on parts of whatever ruin they're in. It is ridiculously cute. Of course, once they do spot you, they will turn into horrifying monsters that attempt to murder you to death. But until they do, they're pretty fun to watch. Also, a bit of a side note, they have a small light on top of what I guess is their heads that usually remains off. However, when they detect the player, that turns purple. Just a fun little side fact. Now, before we get to our final spot, I wanted to share a discovery that I just made today that to me was huge, mind-blowing if you will, and will hopefully be to at least a few of you as well. But one of the more frustrating issues I encounter when playing The Elder Scrolls V is trying to find my next quest objective on the game's map. Oftentimes, I will simply spend minutes attempting to locate the marker and figure out where it is I'm supposed to go. Well, if you simply go to your quest journal, highlight the quest you're pursuing, and press the X button on Xbox or Square on PlayStation, I also believe it's M on keyboards, you'll automatically be taken to its next objective on your map. Six years of playing and thousands of hours in, and I literally found that out by accident today. Now, this is only an honorable mention, as apparently the game also tells you this is possible at the bottom of your screen at that very menu. I just suppose I never bothered to look down and see it, over the course of, again, well over six years. Anyway, hopefully at least one of you also failed to follow instructions and is as mind blown as well. And finally, last on our list, for reals this time, you know what Animal Bethesda did expect us to ride? Horses! These loyal steeds can be purchased from any stable in the game, and will faithfully serve you until you ride them off a cliff or something. Aside from fast travel, they're pretty much the quickest way to get around, and with their thick coat of fur and hooves, they're ideal for the rough climates and terrain that Skyrim bears. They can even defy physics when the situation calls. Well, did you know these four-legged furry friends can also walk and even run on water? Simply dismount your horse over any body of water while he or she is swimming, and remount it, and rather than continue to swim, your stallion will in fact gallop and prance through the lakes and oceans, as if it was still on land. This does also bear some usefulness, as horses gallop considerably faster than anything in the game can swim. So you'll be able to traverse Tamriel's waterways so rapidly that not even slaughterfish can stand a chance at competing. Just, uh... Remember what I said about those features. But with that, we're going to wrap up. Five more things you probably didn't know you could do in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Which on this list surprised you the most? Did you know all of them? What Skyrim secrets, Easter eggs, and but, I mean features, do you know of that I haven't covered yet? Leave a comment down below. Thanks for stopping by, everyone. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everybody.